So if we have a look at the actual earnings impact of the China-US trade war, uh, it doesn't seem to be as you know, significant as people had feared. Is that because uh, your estimates were pretty conservative or because of trade diversion that's going on? Well, uh, clearly uh, we, we, uh, we are, have not seen much impact yet of uh, China-US uh, trade tensions overall, in the overall picture. Obviously, our volumes from China to the US are significantly down. I believe overall trade volumes from China to the US was down 7% in the first half. But US as a country is actually has grown its import by 2.5%. Uh, in the first half. So it just means that the goods are coming from elsewhere and, and uh, there was already a trend uh, in that uh, certain kinds of manufacturing, toys, shoes, garments were moving out of China to Southeast Asia. The trade tensions have clearly accelerated uh, that trend. So, and, and for our business, actually, uh, it might sound uh, strange, but it doesn't really matter whether the goods come from Vietnam or they come from China as long as they're going to the U.S. So going forward, if more tariffs kick in, how big of a hit do you think that will make to global trade? I think the, the, the real risk for our business and, and uh, global trade is really the impact on the global economy. So we have a number of uh, geopolitical events going on right now. China, US uh, trade discussions is one, Brexit is another. Uh, Iran uh, uh, is a third, uh, and, and, and so on, and all of those uh, are, are, you know, can have the impact that the confidence is lowered, fear is increased, uh, and that impact the uh, real economy. If the consumer confidence goes down, or the businesses stop uh, investing because they fear recession, and so on, so so it can become a self-fulfilling uh, prophecy, if you will. So trade tensions is more about the impact on the on the uh, global economy than it is on the trade be between one country and the other. You've actually said that you want to speak to Donald Trump uh, <laughs> when he was going to make a visit to Denmark, but then over those Greenland comments he cancelled his trip. So what would you have said to him? Well, I would have liked to, to, to uh, discuss the benefits of uh, free and fair trade, because obviously we are huge believers, strong believers in, in the benefits of, of having a, a global rule-based uh, trading, trading system that promotes reciprocity and, yes, as I said, free and fair trade. Fair competition is good for the consumer. It creates better products at lower, lower cost. Obviously, I, I'm not blind to the fact that there are, that the trade tensions between U.S. Uh, and, and China are rooted in some fundamental issues that have, have developed o over time as, as China has grown uh, its economy and to, to, today is, uh, is the second largest uh, economy. When I listen to both sides, I hear uh, you know, arguments uh, for why a, a deal should be, be done and, and it's certainly my hope that the two sides will be able to get to get to a new agreement on how to, to conduct trade. The world truly needs uh, not only free and fair trade, but also a rule-based uh, system. Aside from rising trade tensions, there's overcapacity in the global shipping industry. Uh, you have the possibility of weak global demand. So how is MESC going to sharpen its competitiveness to become the, the FedEx of shipping and be really recession-proof? We're doing fundamentally two things. First of all, we are keeping investments in our in ships and containers at, at a very minimum. Actually, we don't have any ships uh, under construction uh, right now, and I don't see a need for adding more capacity in, 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 into, the, into the market that is not really growing.